I uh, appreciate you guys all joining us today. Uh, it's a little bit of a chilly Friday here up in Michigan, but we're, we're bundled up tight and uh, just kind of moving on. Uh, so what we're going to be doing today um, is we're actually going to be using our rotary tool in our 4836 100 watt laser machine uh, to engrave a wine bottle here. So um, the first thing that I kind of want to do with engraving a wine bottle is I want to kind of measure out where I'm going to be putting this at. So what I've actually done, I'm, I'm going to be engraving on the front of it. And so I've got a, a nice sticker here, what we're using, some Barefoot Red Moscato. I'm not a big wine drinker, but I've heard it's very delicious. Um, so basically what I've done is I've gone through and I measured out uh, my label here, which is measuring out about three inches. So I kind of find my center point, which is about an inch and a half. I made a mark here. And what I made a mark with is... Uh, this right here, um, it's a china marker or a wax pencil. Uh, this can be bought at any kind of hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, any, any place like that. Um, so what I did is actually measured out, I made a small little mark there, and then what I did is I took my speed square here, and I actually came to the bottom, just like so, to measure up to make sure I've got a nice straight line. Uh, very similar to that there. Um, what this is going to help do is just ensure that my, my bottle is in my rotary tool, my rotary tool is in straight. So the next thing I want to do after this is I kind of want to measure out my working area here. Um, depending on how you'd like to measure out, I typically, when I'm using bottles and things, I like a fabric measuring tape, just a little bit easier to wrap around the bottle. Um, using a pair of calibers, ruler, anything like that will work just as well. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is kind of just measure out Again, I know I've got about three inches wide here, um, and then just kind of height-wise, I got probably uh, about another three inches there. Now, what I'm actually going to do, I'm probably just going to make this image a little bit smaller than what I think I can actually do here. Um, we're going to be using Corel Draw, and we're going to walk through and I'm actually going to create a file completely from scratch here. Um, and so I actually want to put a round logo on this. Now with round logos, we want to be careful um, because we are putting a round image on a cylinder object. So you can get a little bit of a distortion if you go too large with this. Um, if you're doing this at home and you want to make sure that it's not, it's sizing out correctly and there's no calculations that you need to do to make it not oblong, um, I would recommend going ahead and using um, either some painter's tape or some really thick uh, masking tape to cover this and then just running a quick sample on top of the tape. That's just going to save you a lot of wasted material um, if you have to go back in there and resize. Um, so now that we've got that kind of set up, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and jump over into our Corel Draw program here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. We're going to start a new document here. We'll go ahead and name this Wine Bottle. All right. Um, our primary color mode is going to be RGB. Um, we're going to come down to our working area here, and I'm going to go ahead and just make this two by two. Our resolution DPI, we're going to keep at 300, and go ahead and hit OK. So what I thought would be kind of fun, again, is we're going to kind of create a file from scratch here. I'm going to show you guys some different techniques that we can do, um, maybe do some curved lettering, a nice round image, um, and, and maybe just make this into like an anniversary bottle. So the first thing I'm going to start is in my Corel Draw is I'm going to come over to the left hand side and I'm going to grab my ellipse tool and go ahead and oop, wrong ellipse there, backtrack here, there we go. I'm going to come up to the left hand side now and grab my pick tool, make sure my image is selected here. And then up my scaling, I'm going to go ahead and draw, type in two by two. Get that centered up on our page here. Now, when you're working with Corel Draw, the page here is, is kind of just a guideline, okay, just to make sure that we're staying within relatively 
the size that we're trying to achieve. Um, it really has no bearing once we export the file out. Um, again, it's more of a guideline. So even though we got this circle as two by two and we're outside of this, once we go to export, we're still just gonna take the image in the two by two size. So I'm gonna come bring it back over here. Uh, the next thing that I wanna do is I'm actually gonna add in a contour on this. So I'm gonna come over to the right hand side to my dockers and I'm gonna find my contour. Now, if you don't have your dockers here, um, what you can do is you can come up to window come down to dockers and you can add them in through here. Um, if you've got some up already um, and you're just looking for a different one like the contour, what you can do is just come to the bottom and hit the plus sign here and you can add them in this way as well. So I'm gonna select my circle here and I'm gonna come over to my contour. So the first thing I need to decide is if I want to do an inside contour or an outside contour. Um, for you though, uh, for you, of, uh, sorry, I can't talk today. Um, for all of you out there who don't know what a contour is, um, basically it's just kind of duplicating this line and adding it on the inside or outside. I can tell it how many lines I want on the inside or how many lines I want on the outside. Um, so with this one here, I'm actually gonna select an inside contour. So I'm gonna select that. I just want one line here. And then my offset here is just the distance between my outer line and where my inner line is going to be. Uh, let's start off with a, do a, maybe a 0 0.20. Eh, maybe go a little bit more than that. Let's do a 0.25. There we go, that looks a little bit better there. So what I actually wanna do is I'm gonna add some text on the inside in between these two circles here. So I'm gonna select my circle with my contour and actually what I wanna do is I wanna break this apart, okay? So I'm gonna come up to object and I'm gonna come down to, oh, make sure I've got all this selected. And right down here, break contour apart. What that's gonna allow me to do is just select each individual circle here if I need to. So the inside and the outside. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my text tool over on the left hand side. Grab text. Go ahead and increase my point system here from a 12 and let's go to, let's start with a 48. Now, when you're doing, when you're grabbing your text tool and you're trying to do text to shape or text to path, um, and you're just using your cursor, there's two different aspects to this. So if I bring my cursor in and I have my little squiggle on the bottom, that's telling me that I'm sitting right on top of that line there. Now, if I come in and I have a little dotted box, what that's doing is actually creating me a text box. Um, we don't want a text box. A text box is basically just going to keep my text with inside this shape here. Okay, and that's not gonna allow us to curve it around or anything. Backtrack just a smidge. So I'm gonna come into my inside line. I'm gonna drop it right there. Probably reduce our points down to an 18. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out. I'm gonna go ahead and use all caps here. So do you happy? And then I'm gonna come down here to the bottom and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go to my outside line this time. I select it there. All right. Now this text here, again, I wanna come on the inside. So up at the top on our menu bar, we have these options here to mirror text horizontally and then mirror text vertically. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on mirror text vertically, which is gonna snap it to the inside there. And then I'm going to mirror it horizontally. That way we can actually see it here. I'm gonna minimize this a little bit. Uh, go a little bit more. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna come over to my left-hand side toolbar again. I'm gonna grab my pick tool. 
And I'm going to select my, each one of my text here, and I'm going to change the font. We'll find something kind of nice and fancy here. Now, when you're doing with glass and things, um, I find a, a thicker font really does work best. Um, so I like to find something that I've got a little bit more option to here. And I think I'm gonna go backtrack here a little bit. Do a yeah, we'll do a courier noon. We'll do a nice bold font here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and select my happy now, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I've already got that one, so it's uh, selected, so it's popping up as one of my newer options here. So what I'd like to do is I'd actually really like to get this text away from that line there. Um, so I'm going to zoom in and using my pick tool with my image selected, I can actually just start gradually moving this up. So we can get a little bit more centered in there. Just like so. And then we're gonna come down here to our bottom. And make sure that's selected. And do the same thing. We're just gonna kinda come up above that line there. Just like so. Now you can kind of see where my, my text is kind of bleeding in on a, some, of, some of these areas here. Um, so I actually want to space that out a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to my uh, text tool. I'm going to select that. Highlight this here. And then if I come over to the right hand side docker for my text, I actually have this option right here to actually space my text apart a little bit more. So you can kind of see how that's shifting over. And now we get a little bit more better, yeah, a little bit more gap there, looks a little bit better. And we're still kind of staying up and above the one line and below the other. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my text tool now and let's go ahead and put in a, a number here. Um, well, I'll be celebrating my 15th year anniversary this year, so we'll put a 15 in there. My wife, on the other hand, I'll, even though I don't like wine, she does very much like wine. And maybe just switch up our font a little bit here. Looks good. I'm going to do a bold italic. Increase that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring it right in to the center here. And we've got a little bit of empty space here on the sides. So I think what I'll do is uh, we'll add in a little bit of hearts. So I'm going to come over to my left-hand side toolbar again, and I'm going to select my polygon, and down here we have common shapes. So I'm going to select that, and up at the top here, I've got my little drop box where I can select different shapes here. So lightning bolts, teardrops, smiley faces, hearts, arrows, you name it, we have it in here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of heart. I'm just going to kind of draw one out. All right. And we'll kind of bring that over. And 
make that just a little bit smaller. That looks pretty good there. Just nudge over. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this heart and I'm going to put another one over here on the side. So the first thing I'm going to do though, I want to make sure that these hearts are even. So I'm going to come up to the top toolbar and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag down my ruler line and get it kind of centered in about there. Go ahead and select my heart here. And um, copying and pasting a few different ways we can do that. We can hit our control C and then control V to copy and paste. Uh, you can right click, copy and paste that way. Um, I like my, my quick little method using my mouse. So I'm just gonna grab this. And while I'm holding down my left mouse key, I'm just going to tap my right one. And that's gonna drop it there. Let me kind of nudge that down, make sure we look pretty even there. All right. Now, what the look that I'm trying to achieve here is I actually wanted to engrave the inside of this circle here and leave the text. So the text is actually going to be elevated, and then this 15 here is actually going to be engraved in. So we should get a really nice look on it. Um, so from here, I'm going to go ahead and select my image. I'm up to File and Export. Uh, we'll put it right on our desktop here. As always, we want to export version as an AutoCAD R14. We're going to export the units in inches. Export text as curves. Um, never text. Now, I get that question a lot of like, why am I sending this text out as curves and not as text? Once we export this out as a DXF file, it is no longer text, okay? It's actually going to be an image or a shape. So that's why we want to switch it over to curves here. Um, export bitmap as BMP, and then color or unfilled does not really matter. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my RD Works program. Now, I've already went through and I've already installed my rotary tool here, um, but I am going to walk you through real quickly on that process. So before you hook up your rotary tool, you always want to make sure your machine is on um, and you come into your RD Works program here. So the first thing I'm going to do in here is I'm going to come over to my user tab. I'm going to select other. And if my laser work menu here is in the way, if I come up just above these lines here, you can see my double arrow that I can click and pull down. So the first thing I want to do is I want to click on read. All right, and we would enable our rotary here. Um, make sure that we have a circle pulse and our diameter correct. Um, now, if you're not quite sure what these are based on your rotary tool, because we do have a few different styles out there, we do have this handy dandy cheat sheet available for you that shows you not only the picture of the rotary tool, our chuck rotary tool, but gives you the different uh, parameters here. So our circle pulse based of our three-phase motor, which if you have our 2816 or larger, will be a three-phase motor. If you have our 2616 or 1812, it would be a two-phase motor. And then we've got our diameters here. Uh, so the rotary tool that we're actually going to be working with today is our retro refurbed extender. Um, and so let's just verify we have 5,000 for our circle pulse and 1.46, uh, which is what, yeah, what we have right here, the 5,000 and 1.46. So after I've already read this, I've made sure my parameters are correct. I'm going to go ahead and click on write to send that information back to the machine. At this point here is when I can actually power off my machine, hook up my rotary tool, and then power it back on. Now, uh, one thing you want to make sure of when you power this machine back on and your rotary tool is set up is let it fully reset, okay? Um, it takes a little bit longer for the machine to reset in the rotary tool uh, because when we are using flat work and we power our machine on for the first time, what happens is our laser head goes back to our back left-hand corner and finds its zero, zero mark, okay? So it's finding it on the X, which is our left and right, and our Y, which is front to back. Well, with our rotary tool, we don't have a switch on that to know where that uh, Y axis is. Um, so what it's going to do, it's going to circle through. It's going to keep trying to find that switch. And when it can't find it, it's just going to go to its last known positioning. 
Um, you can actually use your control panel to arrow down um, to find your max area there and then arrow back up. Or actually what I prefer to do is I actually will, before I actually power off my machine or anything like that, I'll actually take my laser head to the kind of the center of the machine. Doesn't have to be absolute or anything like that. And I hit the origin button. That way when I restart my machine with my rotary tool engaged and it goes to its last known positioning, it's automatically going to think that it's in the center of the machine. Um, again, I've already walked through all those steps here and I've already got my machine on. So we're going to go ahead and import in our image. So I'm going to go up to File and Import. Uh, we're going to look on our desktop here. Find our wine bottle. Uh, came in a little small here, so double check my settings. So I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 2 by 2. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and preview, make sure I don't have any issues with my file. Um, and like I was saying, what I'm going to do is I'm going to engrave the inside of the circle, leaving the text, and then go ahead and engrave the 15 right here. That looks good. We can go ahead and hit simulate just to double check. Fantastic. All right. So now with the wine bottle, we're going to set that up into the rotary tool a little bit differently than we would tumblers. Um, typically with tumblers, we would actually rotate this. Um, so our, the top of our cup or tumbler would be on the left hand side and the bottom would be on the right hand side. Um, with the wine bottle, because it's got a neck on that, it's not really going to allow me to do it that way. So I'm actually going to flip this around the opposite way. Um, and basically what that's going to do, that's going to put the same diameter on the drive shaft as what I'm trying to engrave on, okay? And also be allow me to cradle the neck of the bottle um, inside the freewheel side. Um, and we'll look at that a little bit more when we get over there. So what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and rotate my image a negative 90 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to come back over to my work tab over on the right hand side. I'm going to double click here and we're just going to check out some of our parameters. Uh, so I'm going to run this at a 10 speed. Um, we're going to do 15 power. Um, even though this is a thick glass, I really don't like hitting uh, glass bottles uh, or champagne flutes or wine glasses with a whole lot of power. Um, we don't really need to gouge into this. We just want a nice frosted look on this. Um, so again, 10 speed, 15 power, and I'm going to use my interval at 300 dpi. Hit OK. I'm then going to come up and I'm going to change my laser origin. Um, again, this is just a personal preference of mine. I like to be able to control about where the top of my image is going to be at on my material. Um, so I typically like using either the left center or right center. So I'm going to come up to Config, System Setting. And right here on laser head, we have it center, center. So I'm going to select right center. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. I'm going to come back over and I'm going to move my laser work menu back up. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead and hit download. Hit OK. All right, our file is now downloaded, so let's jump over to our machine and see what we can get going here. All right, so what we have here is um, we've got our wine bottle, we've got our line drawn right here, we're pretty well centered up, um, and we're going to take a peek inside the machine here and take a look at our rotary tool. So our rotary tool, we always set up with the motor on the left-hand side here. Okay, so with the wine bottle again, because I want this the bottom of my bottle to be on this drive shaft here, that way the neck can cradle in right on in between the wheels here. And I can use my scissor lift here to actually raise this up to make sure that I'm level and in focus. Um, I'm actually going to move this in just a little bit closer here. There we go. And if you set this up correctly, there are little ridges on the cap here that are going to fit right between the two wheels. And that should help protect it from walking backwards or forwards. We'll go ahead and bring my laser head over and we'll start checking our focus here. 
come up just a smidge there. And we'll bring it down to the other part. Now, one thing that I'll, what trick that I'll do is you'll notice that I'm actually taking my laser head off of the material so it's kind of hanging over the neck. This is going to allow me to take a really good focus reading right here. Perfect. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our rotary tool is in straight and our bottle is in straight. So I'm going to kind of rotate my bottle a little bit here. And I'm going to use my directional arrows just to kind of follow that mark that I made there. There we go. That is one nice benefit of the China marker as well, um, especially when you're using glassware, um, is a lot of times that red dot likes to reflect down through the glass, um, and it's really hard to see it. So with the China marker there, I can actually see where my red dot is at. So I'm then going to bring it up to the top here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Origin to lock that into place here, and then we'll go ahead and frame out. All right, we're looking pretty good here. Now, one final thing that I like to do is I like to add in a little bit of, of dish soap in with this. Um, what the dish soap does is it allows a little bit more oxygen to come through um, and actually gives you a nice, really smooth engraving on the glass. You want to make sure if you're using soap, though, that you stay away from the wheels. We don't want that to get on the wheels and cause it to slip. Um, so what I'm actually using, I've got a little foam kind of paintbrush here and a nice big bottle of Dawn. And so I, I don't need a lot here, so I'm just going to add in a small little drop. Oop, a little too much. I'm just going to go ahead and slide my laser head up. My Y motor is not engaged, so it's not going to hurt the machine at all. And then I'm just going to kind of coat the area that I want to engrave here. Again, we don't need a whole lot. Um, again, we just want to add in a little bit of oxygen in there and add in a little bit of a protective layer from the laser beam and the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and bring this back over, line up with my line here. All right. We're looking pretty good here. Just a smidge. I'm going to go ahead and close my lid here. And it's going to just take a few minutes to run. Um, we'll go ahead and hit start, and then while that's going, I can go ahead and answer any questions you guys may have. All right, nice to see so many people join us today. Again, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, coming into these classes, hopefully you find them informative and helpful. Any questions anybody may have over any of these processes here, uh, please feel free to uh, type them in the, the box here and I'll try to read them off as they come in. Also, uh, feel free, we always have our technicians available 24-7. Um, if you have questions over this process or any of the other processes that uh, we have in any of our other videos, uh, please feel free to give them a call. You can reach them at 844-364-8211. They'll be more than happy to direct you in any, any way we can. Uh, I've got uh, someone asking about power and speed. So I am only running, I'm running about 10 speed, um, 15 power here. Again, I'm not really wanting to dig too far into that glass there. Um, with the rotary tool, I know everybody has their own preferences. Um, when it comes to speed and power, it really is a personal preference, okay? Um, I find running the rotary tool a little bit slower, 8 speed, 10 speed, uh, never over a 15, um, just makes it a little bit more stable. Uh, that's my comfort zone, of course. Um, you're more than welcome to experiment with different speeds, different powers to kind of get the look that you're looking for. A few minutes later. All right. So we did, our wine bottle did break here. Okay. Luckily, I have a backup, so we will try this again here. So I want to explain what happened here because I noticed that as soon as I, I went in there to grab my bottle. So one of the reasons this broke here 
is in, I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to see this or not, but there is a seam running right here at the bottom. So what had happened, if you notice, that's about right where my line is at. So when my laser actually hit that seam there, it's actually what caused it to fracture and break. Okay. Um, these are, are things that you want to kind of keep me aware of. Um, this wasn't anything to do with speed or power. This was strictly just a material issue right here. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and grab my backup bottle because I always have a backup. And we're going to go ahead and try this again one more time. Good thing it's, uh, it's Friday and uh, alcohol spillage is acceptable on Fridays. Just to let everybody know there. I don't think I want to make sure is I don't have any liquid on my wheels. We're going to add in a little bit more soap again here. Double check, make sure we're not on a seam this time. Off here. All right, let's try not to break this one, shall we? All right, we are back in business here. I know, a horrible waste of a bottle of wine. It really, really is. Um, do, do, do. Uh, somebody's asking if um, I'm actually going to be at, uh, at LaserCon um, down in Florida uh, this uh, March, I believe. Uh, yes, I actually will be down there. Um, I will be uh, hosting a class down there. Unfortunately, that week we won't be doing a live stream or anything like that. Um, but I do hope to see anybody available to come down. Um, we're going to do some really cool presentations. Uh, we've got a lot of content available for uh, people, um, a lot of special guests coming in, a lot of customers, things like that. So yeah, by all means, please. I, I don't ever get a chance to get out and about, so I never get to meet people face to face. I know I've talked to a lot of you on the phone um, and, and through these, these workshops, so I would love to meet you all in person. <laughs> All right, looks like we're finished up here with a now unbroken bottle of wine engraved. Let's clean her off and let's see what we have here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of Windex here just to kind of spray it. Let that dry for a quick second so we can get kind of the frost back. Now, if you've watched any of the other videos that I have with uh, dealing with, with glassware and things, um, glass can really vary uh, just depending on, on where, not even where you get it at, okay? And it's hard to tell if you've got a good piece of glass or a good bottle engrave on. Um, I would always recommend, again, sampling out, having something on the side, um, and, and testing out beforehand. Um, now, if you're not right, really getting the frosted look that you would like, you can um, add in a little bit of, of paint into that. Acrylic paint is what I like to recommend, but this is what we have here. It's kind of hard to see here, but we see that our, our anniversary here and our happy um, is nice and elevated um, along with our hearts, and then our 15 is engraved here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ross was asking, how did I get from 15 to 25? Quickly, very, very quickly. Um, no, I actually, uh, this bottle here was my kind of backup bottle. It was one that I kind of sampled out, was kind of playing around with first. Um, I always do like to test things out a little bit ahead of time for you guys. 
So we'll go ahead and leave it open um, for a few more questions. I know there's a lot of conversations going on here, so if I missed your question, um, please go ahead and, and uh, type that out again real quick. Um, and like I said, we'll leave this open in a few more minutes. Um, again, I appreciate you guys all coming, uh, showing up today. Um, again, I, I really enjoy doing these classes with you guys. So again, hopefully you're enjoying them as much as I am. All right. Um, well, if we don't have any more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. I know it was kind of a, a quick one, but we had some excitement today, which is always fun. Get that blood, blood pumping and the heart beating. Um, Again, uh, any questions over anything that we're doing here um, or any of our other videos, please give our tech support team a call. We'll be more than happy to help you out, get you pointed in the right direction. Um, some of you that, that have uh, been around for a little bit longer uh, knows that uh, I, I occasionally even answer the phone too. So if you call up, you may very well get my me. Um, oh, and somebody I did have a question come in here. Um, uh, about using Adobe Illustrator for my designs. Yes, absolutely. You're, you're more than welcome to use any kind of design software that you want. Um, with our AP lasers, they do come uh, standard equipment with the Corel Draw package. Um, so that's typically what I use. Um, I am going to start making some more light burn videos as well. Uh, so keep tuned for those. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful Friday. Have an even better weekend. Try not to lose any of your alcohol if you're a drinker. Uh, you guys have a great day. Bye, everybody.